and welcome to Getting Social with Moodle version 2.0. Okay, just a quick roadmap this afternoon, folks, in terms of where we're heading in the next half an hour or so. Uh, certainly, we're going to kick start with some trends, both, uh, I guess, national and, and global social demographic trends. I think it's a very uh, appropriate platform for the things we'll then discuss, and that being I guess social tools, social social services on the web, and I guess how we might be able to apply those in the context of effective learning, um, effective online learning, right? And that'll that'll flow uh, directly into uh, a demonstration of Moodle 2 and some of the tools that we've got at our disposal. Okay, and as we said, Q and A uh, along the way, and feel free to um, drop your thoughts, or ideas, questions, comments, observations as we go along. Perhaps, um, perhaps a quick poll as a starting point. Um, you know, there's there's a multiplicity of uh, social services on the web. Uh, they're popular, they're common. People enjoy using them. Uh, some more frequent than others. And we'll just push a poll your way. Um, if you could quickly indicate, and we'll give you 30 seconds or so to do this, um, which of those social web services uh, you personally use at least once a week. I think most of us may have heard of some or all of those services. And if you could indicate if you're using one or more of, of those. Okay, thank you for, uh, for your response there. Uh, we've just closed the poll. Uh, Shalom is going to share the results. So you get an idea there. It's fairly obvious. Um, you know, Facebook's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the most traffic site on the planet, full stop. You know, it's got uh, 600 million members. Most of them are very active. So, you know, effectively one in 10 people on the planet use this social networking service. Um, it's, it's, it's more traffic than Google. Um, and it says a lot for social search, where people are actually searching for media or people or friends. Uh, you know, groups and connections via a social network versus using a search engine. So it is a sign of the times. LinkedIn, uh, some of us, uh, some of us use that. I guess it's kind of Facebook for business people. Uh, no one's using Twitter or Flickr. Not, not at least in the last week. And, and YouTube, um, it gets plenty of eyeballs as well. Very good. Well. This thing, I guess this notion of a technology revolution is what I would call it. Um, you know, the first four stats I've just put on the slide there, um, they're, they're local Australian stats and they're fairly recent as in the last 12 or so months. The latter two are international stats. And if we just step through those very quickly, um, you know, it's, it's fairly obvious technology is very pervasive in our country. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're a vast land uh, and our population is scattered across broad areas, but I guess we're concentrated in uh, you know, cities and regional centres for the most part. So the majority of households are fortunate enough to have a computer, and, most, and, and in turn most of those households um, are connected to the internet. Broadband connectivity is becoming more prevalent, so we've sort of evolved beyond the dinosaurs and, and dial-up, um, and, and the majority of us are now on you know, ADS, ADSL or ADSL2, and you know, there's this talk of this national broadband network that will deliver optic fiber internet connectivity to our doorsteps. So that's sort of that's, uh, not too far away. Uh, not surprisingly, there's more mobile phones owned in Australia than there are people. And if you're like uh, Shalona and myself, um, you know, you'd probably, you probably, know, you've got a smartphone in your pocket, it's kind of your mobile office, and uh, you know, you've got one or two spare mobile phones stashed away uh, for safekeeping. Um, you know, internet as well, as far as, you know, how we're being entertained and spending our time and communicating, collaborating, shopping. We're now, uh, we're now spending more time surfing the internet than we are um, you know, sort of absorbing entertainment and information and media via television. So we reached that tipping point about 18 months or so ago, Nielsen Online tells us, in Australia. So you might be part of that, um, you know, of that demographic, you may not, but on average, um, that's where Australia's at. The last two stats are international. And again, they tell a similar story. Probably, a, a, you know, probably these stats are more pertinent um, to the conversation today. Um, you know, there's more 
global users and usage of social networks and email, we're at that stage now. So it's becoming a, a very uh, big part of our lives and what we do in terms of how we how we go about our business. And, and global internet is tipped to outstrip um, desktop computer use uh, by 2013. So that is very significant. Uh, you know, particularly those last two stats when you think about uh, you know the way we can work and socialise, the way we shop, the way we access information and are entertained. And I think more importantly as educators, the way we can teach and train and learn. Okay, so um, it's uh, it's all very significant. And I guess in a nutshell, it sort of says uh, potentially, you know, with the right software and tools and technologies, uh, anyone, anywhere can learn at any time about anything. You know, the options are limitless if we you know we engage this revolution after the purpose of effective learning. All right, so what are the point? In terms of web services, again, these are very uh, popular services and we indicated that before um, in, that, in that initial poll. Um, these are recent stats as well, going back uh, less than 12 months. Uh, WordPress, it's a, it's a free blogging service, um, over 150 million blogs. YouTube, as we said, we know it gets a lot of eyeballs. Two, two billion videos watched per day, uh, more than 35 hours of video content uploaded per minute. So uh, that's pretty staggering. Flickr, Flickr is a photo sharing site. It's sort of to photos what YouTubers do videos. Five, it currently holds five billion photos and you can see there it's getting many uh, photographic uploads per minute by um, you know, amateurs and uh, professional photographers. Twitter, Twitter in a nutshell is, because uh, no one indicated that they're using it, Twitter is, uh, you pretty much share your thoughts in 140 characters or less. Uh, you might, you might uh, share your ideas or follow others um, uh, you know, on your computer and or uh, your mobile phone. I think the power of it is uh, you know, the mobility aspect. Facebook, we've mentioned already, uh, 600 million users and, and growing. Uh, and Wikipedia, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a massive free online encyclopedia. And you can see there are over 3 million articles in English uh, and 400 million edits. So they're all collaborative spaces, they're fun, they're engaging, they're effective. Okay, so if we can, you know, if we can harness, I guess, some of the popularity of these sort of sites and services and some of the social demographics that we just identified, um, it can make us better at what we do as educators online. I think the thing to note here importantly is that, uh, you know, these these services and sites are so popular, um, not simply because uh, you know the end users can, can consume information, but more to the point, the users are the producers or the constructors of knowledge. So that leads us to this concept of social constructionism very quickly, and this is as heavy as it's going to get. We're going to jump into our demo in about a minute. Um, it's, a, I guess, an educational or it's a school of thought, and, and it says a few things, um, you know. You know, above all else, that uh, in an online learning environment, we're all potentially teachers as well as learners. Um, it's it's a known fact that we we learn very well through the art of expression and through the art of observation. Context, learner context, that is, uh, can help us as educators to teach and train uh, in a more transformative fashion. And it's important that our learning environment, be it physical or blended or virtual, uh, is flexible and adaptive. I think Moodle as a software, it gels well with this philosophy of social constructionism. Okay, so this is why we're here today. Um, some of the tools that are inbuilt to the Moodle Learning Management System software, uh, you know, we're at our disposal. You may or may not be using the, all of these tools, uh, but they're there. Um, and again, this is this is the essence of how we harness, um, you know, the social web for the purpose of online learning. So we'll look at some of these tools now. Um, you know, the, I guess if we had to pigeonhole uh, the tools, and it's um, you know it's really a, the dichotomy is this: you've got synchronous uh, synchronous tools. So these are real-time instant tools such as chat and messaging or instant messaging, uh, and the others fall into the latter category. I would say they're asynchronous, or there's some sort of time delay between when uh, I guess the sender or the initial user um, communicates and then when the recipients. Uh, read or respond or uh, collaborate. So the, the asynchronous tools for mine are you know, blog, forum, commenting, wikis and tags. 
Okay, I think we're ready for a demo. So I've just logged into a test instance, this is Moodle version 2.0, and I'll go straight to our Sandpit course. Alrighty, so we'll see, initially at least, we'll see the, uh, the system through the eyes of uh, the administrator. This could well be the teacher or the trainer or the, the course manager. Uh, and then occasionally we might toggle also to the student view to give you their perspective as well. So this is pretty much a plain vanilla Moodle installation and just the basic theme. So it might look a little bit like yours, it could be somewhat different. Okay, now I'll turn everything on. So we'll kick start with the chat module. I said this is a synchronous tool. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty much the same time, different place for the uh, connected users. It's, uh, there's no time delay, it's instant. So we're editing on, we add an activity, and this is a chat. So what we'll do, we'll name this chat. It actually says name this chat room, right? It's sort of a virtual room uh, where we tee up a session for a future date and time with our uh, course, online course participants. So we'll give it a name. And an introduction. What you can do, uh, you can indicate the next chat time. So you can, you can specify a date and time. You can also publish the chat time. And in fact, if it's a repeat session, if it's not a one-off, if it's, I guess, a recurring uh, session you want to hold with your online course participants, you can do it at the same time every day or every week um, indefinitely. So look, what if we say the same time every week? And what we'll do as well, we'll allow, in case people miss a live session, we want to archive the, the chat dialogue. It's only text-based but uh, give everybody the benefit of being able to, uh, I guess, retrospectively view the, uh, the online conversation. So we'll say yes there. Save and display. So this is purely text-based, as I said. Um, there's, there's, no, uh, there's no video, there's no voice, um, but it's a very instant tool. Great for, uh, great for collaborative group work, or great for uh, Q&A, or, or I guess uh, web-based supervision support. Okay, so there's a variety of ways you could use it. Uh, the idea would be that you would click the link to enter the chat room now. It pops up a separate window. I'll just bring that into the center of the, the screen. So I'm in there. It's just myself at the moment. I'll give you the idea. You chat. You type, uh, type your message in uh, the bottom area and just hit enter and that sends it off. Okay. Naturally, as other people enter the virtual chat room, they'll appear on the right side of the screen and they can start to communicate with you as well. And I mean, it works very well for a small group of people, maybe 10 or so. Um, you know, any more than that, the conversation flies off the page uh, very quickly and it's kind of hard to keep up and work out who's saying what and to whom. Um, so just be aware of that. And naturally, you could, um, you know, you could at, I guess it's kind of a web-based um, you know, syntax. You know, you could be referring to at student and you're saying, um, you know, I agree. So I'm kind of not speaking to everybody, but it will be a public message. Um, but um, we're sort of saying it to the student, this student in particular, if in fact the student was there. So we're using, uh, I believe, the compact theme, the bubble theme for those using, um, you know, Mac products um, and the iPhone, for example, um, that should look fairly familiar. You can see what we've got there, kind of a little bubble, bubble thing. All right. Um, and if you want to exit, you simply close the window, or you can uh, minimise it or enlarge it. There's a more accessible interface as well, because uh, you know not all web browsers were created equal, and you've got to be mindful of that. Not just for yourself, but other people might be on different uh, um, you know, computer configurations. So 
you know, it's a more accessible interface, not using Ajax, um, and you pretty much send your message. Um, submit it, and you would have to click, keep clicking refresh um, to see if there's been any updates to the conversation in the chat room. All right, so that's pretty much how it works. There's a variety of options and configurations. Very useful, powerful tool, as I said, for, um, for instant communication that's text-based. Okay, and like we said, to be for users connected online at the same time, but in different geographies or locations. All right, and as we said, if you miss the conversation, uh, you can come back at a later stage and uh, view the past sessions. So they'd be archived in there. Okay. All right. So that's chat. Instant messaging. Again, another synchronous communication tool. Um, and as it suggests, it is instant. Uh, how this works, there's a few different ways we can go about this. I'll just turn editing off for a moment. Okay, um, I've got the messaging block enabled up the top right. That may not be uh, added to your course page by default. So if that were the case, you may need to, uh, in fact, turn editing on and add this block. Okay, there's a few different ways we can message people and then trace messages as they go back and forth between online course participants. But um, to have the block pinned on uh, the course page is pretty convenient. So with editing on, you'd have to come in down to the bottom right. There's a drop menu where you add a block and you would add the messaging block. Naturally, it doesn't appear there for me because I've added that block instance to the course page already. Okay, now I'll just turn editing off. So the way this works, uh, we've got a people block. That will likely be added as a default block on your course page. Okay, um, You or any other course participants can click the participants link and you'll see who's enrolled in the course at any point in time. And you know you should be able to toggle uh, or filter your view by by uh, user role, say teacher or student, for example. So for argument's sake, um, you know, you might be the teacher wanting to send an instant message to a particular student. So what you do, you click there, the link next to their user profile, takes you to the user profile page and you can see there there's a link that reads send a message. So this will be a private instant communication between you and the recipient, in this case just one student. Okay, it's not public like a chat room and it's unlike a discussion forum and we'll get to that in a little while. But you might say something like, um, you know, hello, how are you finding the course so far? So you send that message. Uh, in fact, I can add them as a contact, a bit like a friend or a connection. So they're there for ease of reference down the track. I'll return to the course page. Now the idea is if that person were online, at least in the last five minutes, they would be indicated here in the online users block. Okay, um, And a window would pop up essentially um, almost instantaneously when you've sent them that message, they receive the pop-up. Um, they can read the message and respond or, or choose to ignore it. Okay. If they're not online at that point in time, uh, the message ought to get piped to uh, the mailbox that's been associated with their login account. Okay, that's the way it works. And naturally, if, if the message arrives in their inbox, uh, they click the link, log into the learning management system, and they can then respond. Okay, so I'll sort of show you how it would work from the student point of view. If I, if I log out momentarily, and I'm going to come back in as that student who just received the message, You can see here down the bottom right, I've just had this little, little label pop up. Two new messages I could ignore or go to the messages. Okay, so it does indicate the messages have come from people who aren't on my uh, contact list. Um, I can certainly add them. I could block them or choose to ignore them if I wanted. 
Uh, and naturally over time, as you get a big list of people, um, you could search through your contacts um, by conversations and courses um, and also message history keyword searches. Okay? I'll just respond to the, uh, the person who sent the initial message. Remembering this is through the eyes of the student. So I'll send that message back. Okay, so look. Again, logging out and I'll come back in. So that is messaging and as I said with the block it makes uh, it makes it very easy to monitor um, the instant communication. You would click the messages link and uh, you know, again you would be searching for people or messages or run an event search. Okay. Naturally over here in the navigation block as well on the left side um, under your uh, my profile, expand that out, messages, same thing. Okay, I'll return to the course page. Just bearing in mind, I'm now logged in. We're seeing we're seeing the course through the uh, the eyes of a teacher or a trainer or an editor. Okay, not the admin. But um, again, we we should we, we should be able to uh, see and do everything uh, we've got in mind. Okay, so that's um, that's instant messaging, and it is exactly that. Um, I guess the only other thing um, worth worth bearing in mind, um, you know, you might in fact want to. Um, send an instant message to more than one person at a time. Um, this is where you could come in and on the participants page select all and with the selected users choose to send an instant message. Um, you know, the thing I'd be mindful of here though, you are now creating this, again, the 10 recipients of this instant message. You're creating 10 private pipelines with your recipients. They might choose to respond. Um, Ten private conversations. You have to ask yourself: Is this the appropriate tool, uh, or would this bulk communication be better handled, uh, you know, in a chat session or via a discussion forum? And we'll get to that in a short while. But look, I'll just go through with this in any case. So we're asking about their project. And there's a preview of the message to be sent, and we've sent that now to 10 recipients. Returning to the course page. All right. I think it's a good opportunity to move on to the discussion forum, and that's essentially a public space where people can ask questions, get answers, help one another. Okay. It's really, um, you know, the forum is part of the staple uh, online learning diet. In fact, if you add a new course um, to, you, to your Moodle, um, without doing anything, it's automatically given and used for okay, one of these at the top here. Okay. It's a bit of a monologue, bear that in mind. This sort of discussion forum uh, isn't a two-way conversation. It's really more an opportunity uh, for the, the teacher, the person, uh, I guess, facilitating and moderating the, the online course to make general news or announcements to broadcast. Right? And this, in fact, may be more appropriate than um, sending a bulk instant message to all your course participants, okay? Because you won't get back ten private, uh, ten private communications. So look, we had a new topic. Uh, we'll give the discussion topic a subject. And a message. Okay, you can attach files if that's appropriate. But look, we'll just pass that off, and that has been done. So the idea would be uh, your course participants, students in particular, could um, could visit this discussion forum and go to that particular topic or thread and read what you've had to say. Again, it's a monologue. They won't be able to respond to this particular forum post in this sort of forum. Um, they might be able to start their own discussions. All right, um, but this is very useful for general news and announcements. So 
that's the news forum. For the other sorts of forums that you might have in mind, you've got to add those to your course. So what we do from the course page, turn editing on. Add an activity. And this is a forum. There's a few different types. In fact, there's five different types of forums. Um, a standard form for general use will suit us uh, nine times out of ten because it's multi-purpose. Anyone can start a discussion. Anyone can respond to somebody else's post. Okay. Um, the others, the others are more specific. Okay. You've got a standard form with a blog-like display. Q and A is exactly that. You've got each person posts one discussion. So you speak. You only speak once. Uh, or you've got a single, simple discussion. So it's really one thread, one topic of communication in that particular form. So it's very focused. We'll stick with the, uh, the default form type. So this is, in fact, a dialogue, which is what we want. We want teachers talking to students, students talking to teachers, students talking to other students. So it's not a one-way street, it's more like a multi-lane multi uh, roundabout, I suppose. So we give it a, uh, an introduction. Again, this is a public space. Uh, there's a few options here worth knowing about. Subscription, this can be pretty handy because um, you know, it, it, it might be a big expectation that your students are going to, on a regular basis, log into the learning management system, go to your online course, go to the forum, Go to the thread to see who said what day for day. Okay, subscription can actually make it convenient for you, course participants, where the system will send um, the posts or at least the digest of the post directly to their mailbox instead. And I think most people check their, their mailbox uh, at least every day, uh, if not every other day. All right. So, you know, um, optional subscription. Um, that is probably, in terms of netiquette, that's probably a good thing you get. You, you give, uh, you give the users a choice. They can opt out of the subscription. If you force it on them, they kind of force fed the news and they can't unsubscribe from, uh, from the, the forum communication being piped to the mailbox, potentially. Retracking can be useful as well in the sense that uh, if, if a user does log into the, the system and go to the course, they can see that the forum may in fact have some new posts that haven't been read since the last login, so they know there's a bit of reading and catching up to do. The other default settings are pretty okay. RSS feeds can be useful as well in terms of people subscribing via their web browser and having having the uh, discussions uh, fed directly to their web browser as opposed to being piped to their mailbox. Uh, forums can also be used, and, and I've seen forums used very effectively sometimes for uh, you know assessment purposes. It might be just a participation grade of five or ten percent. Uh, but look, in any case, whatever it is, if you if you apply ratings, uh, it can in fact improve or, or motivate, uh, I guess, the, the forum posters to you know, think about the quality of what they're what they're saying in a in a public public space. Look, we'll save and display, and I think you get the idea how this will work. If as a teacher we start the conversation, so we'll give it a subject. So. Um, So a few words to perhaps sum up the subject. This will be the first thing that users see, and then the message or subject. So we'll post to the forum. So the idea would then be if we momentarily log out and we'll We'll come back in as a student. We go to that forum. We can read what the teachers had to say there and potentially respond.
Okay, so that's discussion forums. Again, a different tool. It's an asynchronous tool. I guess that's more for um, delayed communication, a little bit like voicemail or email. Uh, you know, the sender communicates with the recipients but doesn't expect an instant response. The recipient will respond when they've had time to think about it uh, and when they're ready to. All right. Okay, I'll come back in as teacher. We're being presented, by the way, this is the My Moodle page and your learning management system may or may not be configured this way. Um, in a nutshell, it, it personalises the, the learning um, experience for the end user and, and you can actually redirect your non-admins to this particular page. It will look a little bit like this um, and this is what I'll get upon login. It will be a list of the courses that they're enrolled in and I guess the, the activities that are relevant to them, be it assignments or chats, discussion forums and so forth. Okay, and, and things again like it could be their files, their messages, their calendar. That's right, so this will be for students um, and again it's, it's students and teachers and, and lesser roles, uh, it's for non-admins essentially. Okay, now commenting. Commenting is something that's, uh, that's pretty new to Moodle 2.0 and you can comment in a variety of places throughout, um, throughout uh, Moodle now, including da in databases and glossaries and wikis. But the obvious place you will want to set up commenting is in the comments block. And again, this will likely need to be added to your course page. We've got one here on the right hand side, it's been added already. It's like a shout box, so anyone can um, make a comment publicly at any point in time, and that's date and time stamped. I guess one thing to consider is, uh, you know, it's kind of licensed for any course participant to say anything, uh, you know at any point in time, uh, you know, with all of these tools, and it doesn't just hold true for commenting, but you know, for, for, for chats and messaging and blogs and the like, these things need to be moderated. And, and, and you know, I guess there's a shared responsibility there. Naturally, um, you know, the, the, the teachers and the administrators um, need to keep a close eye on the course and the, and the content in the course, um, you know, as it's being facilitated, as the learning is being facilitated. But I think it's fair to say, and it's a fairly sensical thing to, uh, to ensure your users um, understand what's appropriate use. We model it for them and they, they even are asked to agree to terms and conditions, um, you know, acceptable use guidelines before being given access to the, to the learning management system and any course in particular. Right? So it is all about, I guess, this is an online, these are online communication tools, but I think the rules are the same. You know, the, I guess the, the conventions that we've established, you know, if, if you wouldn't say something to someone face to face or in person, well, it's probably not appropriate to say it in a chat room or a forum or a blog or a, or a chat box, right? So the same sort of conventions um, and protocols ought to apply. So that's commenting. Um, from there, I guess blogging might be a good, a good place to go and a mindful of time. We've got, um, Perhaps we'll to tie things up in the next five or ten. And any questions that we see pop up in the Q and A window, please drop in there as we as we get along. Uh, uh, blogging blogging is, I guess, it's sort of short for a web blog. If you're into journaling, um, you know, and um, you know, reflections, public reflections or self reflections, it could be a perfect tool for you and your uh, online course participants. Okay, I've added. Um, the blog menu to the course, again, it won't be there by default, that's the sort of thing that needs to be added by an administrator or um, an editing teacher to the course. Um, in any case, if, if, if the blog menu is not there, what you can do um, via your profile, so the navigation block, that's pinned up the top left at the moment, we click my profile, blogs, and what you can do, you've got a few sub-options here. You can view all your entries or add a new entry. Okay, so I might in fact do that now. So I'll add a blog.
And again, this is a public reflection most likely. Anyone who's uh, got a login account to the learning management system uh, will likely be able to view and uh, comment on this blog post. So it's kind of a, it's, it's sharing a, 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 a thought or an idea publicly with, with other people. So it's all about, I guess, um, you know, socialization and perhaps getting a critique. And there's a lot to be said, uh, you, know, uh, you know, educationally speaking about metacognition, the idea of, um, you know, thinking about one's um, thinking and learning processes. That's a very, very powerful uh, form of learning. So I would type a message and perhaps give it a fair bit of thought. I could attach a file, and I might in fact do that as a matter of fact. So I upload a file and then I need to browse for a file that may be appropriate to my blog post. So I upload that. It could be a document, a presentation, a piece of media. And I decide who I want to publish this blog post to. You see the options here. Anyone on the site, or if it's just for your eyes only, you draft it to yourself. And no one else will be able to read or comment on it. Okay. In this case, look, I'm comfortable with what I've got here. Um, anyone on the site. Uh, the administrator can set up official tags. Tags are like keywords and associated blog entries. Um, it makes them easier to organise and to find. Um, you know, this entry might relate to Moodle, let's say. You could add other tags as well. Uh, certainly, I mean, this is for, I'm just getting some questions coming through there as we get along. Um, I mean, you know, this is, this is perhaps a more a, a reflective tool. As I said, if, you, if you're into journaling with your, with your, uh, with your students, blogging, blogging is very effective um, and students can use it as well. It's not a teacher-only tool, bear that in mind. Everybody has access to blogs and controls the visibility of their blog. Okay, so look, I've just tagged this entry. I'll save it. So that's now been posted, and we can see the uh, we can see the entry there. Actually, I made an earlier post. As a matter of fact, it wasn't my first blog post. So what I'll do is return to the course page. Uh, we can now see um, there's some tags. I've added this tags block and tags again as I said are sort of keywords that associate blog entries and they can also associate the interests of users. Okay, and the, the interest can be indicated via um, a user, the user's profile. And we'll get to that in a moment and look to wrap things up quite shortly. Um, we've, got, we've got now Moodle as a tag that appears on this tags block. Okay. Uh, we could add Moodle as an interest and I now am presented, remembering this is, this is through the eyes of the teacher, um, we, can see, um, we can see that the teacher is interested in uh, Moodle okay? and in fact blogged about it as well so it's populated on this page. Um, look, if I, log, if I log out momentarily, I'll come back in as an admin because there's one other thing I can do with that tags page which can be very handy. And these tags pages uh, can, make, uh, can make your learning, online learning, very social in uh, minimal, minimal time. So we go to the Moodle tags page through the eyes of an admin. If we turn editing on, It doesn't seem to be doing what I thought it would. And I was intending to, in fact, add some blocks to the task page. I think I prepared one of these earlier. So I'll give you an idea how this works. Uh, the administrator ought to be able to add additional blocks to any given tags page. So you can see, for example, uh, Flickr images and YouTube videos being fed in from these third-party sites or services by keyword. Uh, or, or the tag for this particular page. In this case, it's Latin. Okay, um, so that can make this page very social and collaborative in no in no time at all. If I visit 
my user profile page and look there, edit my profile. As I said, tags are key words that can associate blog entries and users by their interests indicated on their profile page. So look, we could put in uh, a list of interests here with the administrator and it might be that they are also interested in Latin and comma separate another tag or interest, Moodle. Alright, so update the user profile and if we revisit the Latin page you'll now see that the administrator user is also um, on this page and um, they can communicate uh, immediately with another user who's interested in uh, this particular tag. They can see people who have blogged about it, you've got images and videos being fed in socially from these third party sites. If you change your mind down the track, you could remove this tag as one of your interests to remove yourself from this particular tag page. Um, over time, I suppose it's the kind of a collective duty that uh, you know we moderate the appropriateness of the you know the content on these tags pages. And at any point in time, um, you know, a tag could be flagged as inappropriate, um, and the administrator would be notified. Okay, and they could they could investigate that particular tag. All right, I'm looking to just about wrap up. I'm mindful of time. Uh, if there's any questions, perhaps now might be a good time to um, to ask them. Just drop them in the chat window there. Um, if there's anything uh, that we haven't quite covered, and I, I guess beyond the formalities of this presentation, if you've got a couple minutes, um, we'd appreciate some feedback. Um, and on the same token, if you want to hang around and ask some questions sort of offline, we'd be uh, happy to assist. Look, I'll wrap up in any case, perhaps with a, a Chinese proverb. You know, this can be a food for thought for the day. Um, you know, Confucius, he was a, uh, a great Chinese thinker and social philosopher back in 500 BC, and he said, um, tell me and I forget, show me and I remember, let me do and I understand. And I think that's the essence of uh, getting social with Moodle. It's letting the users take control, take ownership of their learning. You know, they're, they're not just consumers, but they're producers and constructors of knowledge and information. And, and even uh, you know, modern day educational research empirically tells us that we learn best by doing. Okay, we're going to learn less by being shown and less again by being told. So put that proverb in your back pocket. There's some references from today's presentation. Uh, as Shalina said, we'll make this presentation available uh, via the web in a short while. And we appreciate the time and your participation today. I'll hand you back to Shalina. Thank you, Moodless, for participating in today's webinar presented by My Learning Space. We trust this session has been of benefit to you. If you would like to learn more about Moodle 2.0 and its functionalities or any of our expert services, please feel free to contact us. If you have any questions, as Chad said, please ask them now. To everyone, we look forward to seeing you again in our future webinars and happy Moodling. <laughs>